My mom is right now in Isle of Man, a small island outside of the UK where she's competing in one of the most prestigious chess tournaments in the world, the FIDE Grand Swiss. Now the tournament has an open section with world-class chess players such as Hikaru Nakamura, Fabiano Caruana, Anish Giri, and Larissa Ferusha, you name them. But there's also a woman section where she's participating where a lot of very strong grandmasters are participating in too. Some very strong grandmasters are Goryachkina, Kostenyuk, and, well, my mom. <laughs> She's also a grandmaster. Now, the reason the tournament is so prestigious is because the top two finishers will qualify for the 2024 Candidates Tournament, which is the most important chess tournament in the world. But in addition to that, there's a $140,000 prize pool, which is a lot, especially for a chess tournament. So my mom came in there very prepared, very excited, but obviously a little bit nervous. And unfortunately, the beginning of the tournament didn't turn out so great for her. She only started with one point out of four. So she had a pretty rough start of the tournament. Now, things got even worse when she saw her pairing after having lost two games in a row. She was facing 14-year-old American chess prodigy Alice Lee. Alice, even though she's only 14 years old, almost has a FIDE rating of 2400. This year, she drew against Hikaru Nakamura in a tournament game. And well, she's the youngest American to ever get the international master title, which she still hasn't been awarded, but she has already fulfilled all the requirements for it. So Alice is an extremely strong player and she has even been compared by some people to the likes of Judith Polger or to the likes of, well, becoming the best woman in the world at chess at some point. So she has a very bright and future career in front of her and that's no good news for my mom. My mom was absolutely terrified before this game. The irony of this is that my mom is the oldest competitor in the tournament and Alice is actually the youngest of the whole tournament so it was literally the oldest versus the youngest facing each other which I think is pretty cool it's like a clash of generations also by the way I'm right now in LA staying at the house of the Botas sisters so that is why it literally says Botas there with huge letters and there's some Shrek stuff and well yeah that's that's why the background looks like this this is not my my normal background I'm not really a Shrek fan, I'm so sorry. Okay, my mom had the white pieces and she started with knight f3, which is a very flexible move. She's not really saying what she's going to play. Instead, she's waiting for her opponent to respond in a way and then she will respond to that. So Alice went d5, c4. Now this became a reti and she captured the pawn. And now my mom, she really wants to take the pawn back. Now, it's important to notice that this was a really big turning point in the tournament. If my mom would win this game, then she would all of a sudden have a decent tournament again and she would have chances. But if she lost this game, if she lost three games in a row, then this would be a really bad tournament for her. So this game was very important. And I think that's why she played quite a solid opening, uh, which is not really too tactical. Um, so I think that was why she played this. So knight f6, she captured the pawn. You don't really want to defend the pawn here as black. If you start defending, then it's going to be really easy for white to like weaken these pawns. So yeah, you don't really want to try to defend this. And if black loses one pawn, then it's goodbye to the other two. The other is going to be lost too. So you don't want to do that. So instead she just developed her knight. Mom captured her pawn, e6, castles. And now uh, she pushed his pawn. And the idea of this is that she wants to start pushing her queen side pawns. If she's able to push, you know, b5, c5, this will typically be the ideas, then she's going to get a lot of space on the queen side and it's going to be much easier for her to develop. So she'll be able to get his, her bishop out this way maybe. Um, she'll, she'll just basically get a lot more space, uh, which is really important for black as black doesn't have any central space right now at all. So my mom went queen e2 c5, the idea of this is to kind of make it harder to go d4, and now my mom went rook d1, preparing to go d4. And this is now being very obvious, black is going for the queen side, my mom is trying to get space in the center. So the bishop developed, and now she went a4. 
She could have gone d4, but then the opponent was going to go c4. So she started with going a4, a very flexible move. The idea of this is that if now Alice would push the pawn one step, now uh, it might be a better idea to at some point go d4, as c4 is not possible anymore. But she might not even do this. Another idea here would just be to take control of this square. But instead here, after a4, Alice went for knight bd7. And this seems as if she's giving up a pawn right now, but she's not. Alice is too good to give up a pawn like this. So here, um, the idea is that after my mom captures this pawn and Alice captures back, we can see that the queen is threatening this pawn, but my mom's rook is also hanging. So she needs to begin with trading rooks. And now after my mom captures this pawn, we can see that this f3 pawn is going to be hanging. So it's actually just a trade of pawns. And this position now looks very weird. I mean, this looks extremely strange because Alice King has not castled. My mom's king has castled, but it's looking very open. There's a lot of squares in front of it that are unprotected. And it seems as if the queen together with the knight can create a really strong attack towards the king. But at the same time, like I said, this king is very, very, very unsafe. And uh, Alice is still missing two pieces to develop. She needs to get both the bishop and the rook out. So this is a very strange position. I haven't seen a lot of positions like this. And this is only move 13. This is literally the opening. So my mom went queen f1. Very sensible move. She's trying to keep everything together. She's keeping everything very safe. And now the idea is that if there's any check, there's just simply going to be queen g2. And now we see how important it is that this bishop is also defending this rook right now. So here, um, g5 was played, and this is kind of a crazy move. But the idea of this is just simply that she's going to be able to, well, first and foremost, uh, she wants to start pushing this pawn maybe. And she's also going to be able to maybe go uh, rook g8 at some point and then try to create try to get like the rook out uh, and put some threats on the king. So here, my mom went d3. She literally did not care. <laughs> and she needed to get her pieces out. She decided that it would be a better option for her to get the knight out through d2 and c4 than it would be to go knight c3. And by doing this move, she's also eliminating this square for the knight. So Bishop d6, it makes sense that Alice is getting her pieces out and this bishop is right now really looking towards the king. And now it was time for my mom to trade queens. Queen g2, if there'd be a trade of queens, then so be it. It would be pretty much pretty, pretty equal, even though my mom would be slightly better, I believe, in the endgame because this pawn is very weak and has no other pawns defending it. It's an isolated pawn. Um, but Alice decided to not trade queens. Instead, she went queen h5. She wanted to keep the pressure going on my mom. And this was now a very tactical position. I mean, this was, it may look like the evil bar may say that this is equal, but this is a very tactical position. So knight d2 was played. The idea of this is just that she's developing her knight and she is looking at some really good squares. This c4 square is looking really good right now. If the knight is able to go up to c4, well, then uh, this bishop is going to be hanging and the knight is just simply going to be very well placed here. So g4, the pawn kept pushing. Knight c4, the bishop retreated. And now my mom developed the last piece that was missing. She developed her bishop. And this move may seem like a small move, but this move you guys are going to see is going to become a crucial move later on. So... At this point, there's no point in, in Alice castling. I mean, if she castles, then the rook is just going to get to a very, very passive square. It's better for her to move up her king one step and then have this rook be active. So king e7, rook a1. This position is completely equal so far. But now, for the first time in the game, Alice Lee makes a mistake. And it may not look like a big mistake, but she goes queen g6, and this is a big problem because she's placing her queen in actually a pretty bad square. Um, and, and you guys are going to see why in just a few moves. It's going to make a lot of sense, but the queen here is not well placed. So my mom went bishop c2. She's one, defending this pawn, but two, sometimes she's going to be able to maybe create some problems on this diagonal. And now... Another mistake was played, and my mom always says this, and I think a lot of people say this, but 
you know, I've just, I, I grew up with my mom teaching me chess. So that's all, all I know. <laughs> my mom always said that the first mistake you do is not the problem. The, pl- the problem is the mistake you do right after it. A lot of times when you do one mistake, you will do two. Um, and they will come right after each other. And that was kind of what happened in this game. Now Alice played knight d5. And this, it may not really look like a big mistake. It looks as if the knight is just getting into a more active square. And it looks as if the knight is just right now blocking the queen from entering, which looked like a really scary move, queen b7. However, the problem with this move is that Right now, my mom has a really strong move, which is rook a7. She's bringing up the rook, and there are so many threats right now, which literally come from the fact that this queen is placed here. Let me show you, for instance, what happened if she would go rook g8. If she would go here, there'd be this move bishop a5, which would be very, very strong. The idea being that if bishop takes a5, there is uh, knight e5, threatening both this knight and the queen. The knight is pinned, it cannot move, and this is just completely lost for Alice now. She's going to have to move the queen, and then, well, this is just going to fall down. I mean, she's, she, she might even lose the queen at this point. So this is if king f6 she can take here. So this is just a really bad position. So here, um, uh, this was played, rook a7 was played by my mom, and now it became really hard to see what she should do. So she ended up going rook c8, defending this bishop, and... Uh, It makes a lot of sense um, because otherwise there might have been threats as well of maybe pushing e4. The knight moves and then the bishop is hanging. So she kind of had to defend this bishop. So rook c8 and now bishop a5. Once again, idea is that if takes, there is uh, knight e5. I mean, you can even take here immediately and then go for the fork, but... There's going to be knight e5, threatening the queen and this knight. And now you can see how big of a problem it is that this queen is placed on this square. So she went queen g8. And now my mom traded a few pieces. And then she went for this move, queen c6. Just basically getting the queen right in there in the action. And this right now, it, it, it may seem like it's equal material, but this queen being in so much close proximity to the king can face a lot of problems. So right now, uh, Alice ended up playing king d8. She just moved up the king. But here, if she would have played, for instance, something like queen c8, I just want to show you why this can become so much trouble. There is so This queen is just so strong here. And the queen, together with the knight and the bishop, are creating so many problems. She could, have, she could go here, bishop a4, pinning the knight, um, which would be which would be just very scary as after bishop a4 there'd be threats such as knight e5 um, but if like if for instance the king would go something like king d8 there'd be stuff like knight e5 if the king would go here there would be stuff like bishop a4 and then if the knight goes somewhere I, this is crazy but this is actually just the check uh, this is actually just going to be a checkmate wait no I'm kidding. Queen takes f6. This is the checkmate. There we go. I was like, this is not a checkmate. Uh, Queen takes f6. This is a checkmate. So all of this is like insane. And it's so fascinating how well all the pieces work together. The queen, the knight, the bishop, all of them work amazingly well together. But she did not end up uh, going queen c8. Instead, she went king d8. And now after bishop a4 threatening to capture here with the checkmate, Queen e8 was played, queen b7, I mean, the idea here is just, well, she's, she's threatening so many things, she's threatening knight b6, she's threatening knight d6, she's threatening so many things, and after knight d5, knight d6, there was a resignation from Alice Lee, because if the queen moves to e7, uh, which is the only square you can move to to defend this knight, then there's going to be a checkmate on c8. So here she would have to sacrifice a queen to continue the game, which is not something she wants to do against the grandmaster. So my mom ended up beating Alice Lee. And uh, I think that the story of Alice is fascinating. She's a very strong player. She has such a bright future. She's so young. I wish I was you know, remotely as good as she is at chess. Um, and I'm a bit older than her, but I was very happy that my mom won. And this actually 
started a really good series of events for my mom because after she won this game, she ended up winning two more games. So she won three games in a row. This game was literally the catalyst for my mom having a great tournament. And it really was a turning point for her. So right now, uh, my mom, she just finished uh, her, her last game. So she drew today, I believe. And I believe that right now she has around an 18th position. But when this video is out, then maybe all the rounds will have been finished. But so far, she's doing very well. And I'm only hoping that she ends up taking a few more points in the last few rounds. I'd be so happy. And I know that uh, this means so much for her. So she would be very happy too. So she's very happy right now. Tournament has been going well. And uh, hopefully it'll continue doing so. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoy the game and the analysis. Keep on rooting for Alice Lee. Like I said, I'm so fascinated by her and I want to see how far she goes and uh, root for my mom too. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching the video. Bye.